I'm going to play you two clips from two different pastors illustrating some of the unbiblical and dangerous ideologies that have infiltrated the church today and that are causing division amongst Christians. And then I'm going to play you a clip from another pastor that absolutely blows this nonsense out of the water. But first, I just want to highlight this point that we are all human beings created in the image of God. Because of Adam's sin, humanity inherited a fallen nature, but Christ died for us despite any of our differences because we are created in God's image and he loves us. Under the new covenant, there's only two types of people. There are those people who are in Christ, those people who are saved, who have eternal life, who have right relationship with God, and then those people who are outside of Christ, those people who are not saved, those people who are dead in their sins and those people who are separated from God. For those of us who are in Christ, what unites us is far greater than anything that could possibly divide us. Every single one of us, despite any of our differences, we have the same position, identity and standing in Christ. How amazing is that? We see this in the Bible. In Galatians 3.28, it says, there is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither slave nor free, there is neither male nor female, for you are all one in Christ. Now, this doesn't mean that these differences don't exist. Of course they do. But the point is that these differences are not to divide us and they're certainly not to define us. Unfortunately, some of these uh, worldly ideologies that do divide people have found their way into some of the churches today. And some of these include are things like critical race theory, systemic racism. There are, there are many others, but I just want to focus on that in this particular video. So I'm going to play you the clip of these pastors uh, speaking on these matters, and then I'm going to show you why this is just completely messed up. Totally honest, like, so being angry about the situation, but um, it's difficult for me uh, sometimes not to just torch like all white people, because in particularly white evangelicals and Christians, and I know as a white pastor, I have blind spots. So I am part of the problem. A lot of people, including a lot of white people, when we hear the word racist, we think of the extreme. We think of a white supremacist marching in Charlottesville or a Klan member marching on the streets of Alabama in 1960. And we think, well, I'm not a white supremacist. I'm not a racist. In fact, many people think that very many white people especially think that very few people are racist. We can even start to believe that racism is not much of a problem today. It's just the extremes. Individually, we don't think we have any prejudice against someone because of their ethnicity. We think, even say that we're colorblind, that it doesn't matter to us if someone is black or white, when the reality is it does matter. It's really sad listening to this because it's completely unbiblical. What it's saying is that basically in our culture that you are inherently racist because of the color of your skin. And that if you say that you're not, then it proves how racist you are because you don't even recognize that you're racist. Now that in and of itself is racist. And there may be some people that are espousing these ideologies in the church that are even well-meaning people, but it still remains deception. Now, I just want to say that racism does exist. Racism is real and people are hurt by racism. And we shouldn't ignore the hurts of people. People have legitimate hurts because of racism as well as other sins. And people that have experienced this, we should listen to them. We should care. We should have compassion for them. But what we don't want to do, what we, what we don't want to do is to speak things into their life that are going to allow them to remain in that place, that are going to enable them to remain in that pain and to define themselves by their hurts. No, we want to speak to them truth that is going to set them free. And that truth is found in Jesus Christ. So I'm going to play you a clip of another pastor that absolutely blows this nonsense out of the water. And then we're going to discuss it further. But there is another separation. There is actually a separation that we do have here in Scripture. It's a real separation. Uh, the separations that we have, the racial categories that we have, are artificial. They are not biblical in nature. Nor are they genetic in nature. They are artificial based on people's hair and their features and their skin color and things like that. That is artificial. It's not real. 
We've been convinced that it is, but it's not real. But the Bible does talk about a real distinction, and that is between Gentiles and Jews. Now, racial distinctions are things that we have made up to divide ourselves as individuals, and it's crazy. It's logically inconsistent. I read these forms and people, you know, you're like, what, are you, what, is your, what is your race? Human. I absolutely love this clip because it is pure truth. And the truth is a thing that sets us free. With any sin, including with racism, it comes because of the fallen nature of man, not because of the color of our skin or because of anything else. And the solution to this is a transformed heart, not these ideologies that are going to cause further division and define us as these particular sins. What we need to do is to encounter Jesus Christ through the gospel. And then when we do, he transforms us, our heart, motives, desires. And all of a sudden we begin to love righteousness. We begin to love people and we begin to see people as precious human beings created in the image of God, rather than defining them by anything else that can cause division. This is how we should view people because this is how God views people. Would love to get your thoughts on the issue. Leave your comments below friends and I look forward to talking to you soon. God bless you.